we're going to talk about Maurice Wilkes, um, or Sir Maurice Vincent Wilkes, as he was later known as. He was born June 26th, 1913, and he sadly passed away on the 29th of November in 2010 in Cambridge, in Cambridgeshire, England. He was um, a British scientist, a uh, computer scientist, who designed and helped build the Electronic Delay Storage Automatic Calculator, otherwise known as EDZAC. And it was one of the first earliest stored program computers. Before we go into EDZAC um, and how it changed things and moved things on, we're just going to cover some of his early life. Morris was born in Dudley in Worcestershire, England, and he was the only child of Ellen and Vincent Joseph Wilkes, who was an account clerk at the estate agents of the Earl of Dudley. And he grew up in Starbridge in the West Midlands, and he was educated at the King Edward VI College in Starbridge. During his school years, he was introduced to amateur radio by his chemistry teacher. He went on to study mathematics at St John's College in Cambridge from 1931 to 1934. And as all things at this part, um, the kind of the world start to collide because he also knew... Alan Turing. But we'll come to that slightly later in this because there's quite an interesting twist on this. And in 1936 he completed his PhD in physics on radio propagation of very long radio waves in the ionosphere. He was also appointed a junior faculty position of the University of Cambridge through which he was involved in the establishment of a computing laboratory. A little bit later on he was called up for military service in World War II and worked on radars at the telecommunications research establishment. Strikes upon difficult to hit targets were made by the RAF and the United States Air Force. It should be recalled that these techniques were on the cutting edge of the technology more than 60 years ago. So after the war things started to change because Wilkes had been involved in radar for the military so he had a good grounding in the technology that was being used at the time and i think because of this he was appointed second director of the university of cambridge mathematical later to be known as the computer laboratory originally the the lab at cambridge held many different forms of computing devices including a differential analyzer but one day leslie Comrie visited Wilkes and lent him a copy of John von Neumann's pre-pressed description of the EDVAC um, and that was a successor to the ENIAC and it was under construction at the time at Moore School of Electrical Engineering and he had to read it overnight because at the time there was no photocopying equipment and he had to memorize as much as he could and from that point on, he wanted to be involved in the design and the construction of such a machine. So, later that year in August, in 1946, he travelled by ship to the United States to enrol in the Moore School Lectures. But unfortunately, due to travel delays, he was only able to attend the final two weeks. And... It was on the return trip, a five-day voyage back to England, Wilkes sketched out the structure of a machine that would become EDZAC. Now, EDZAC wasn't meant to be better, bigger or faster than any of the other ideas for this kind of computer. What he wanted was a computer that worked and that could be used by people in the college. And at the time, what he actually constructed was a, a practical stored program computer, which was only the second of its kind. And it operated successfully from 1949 for well over a year before the more complex EDVAC came online. 
And later in 1950, Wilkes used Edzac to solve a real-world differential equation relating to gene frequencies. And it was the first use of a computer for problem-solving in the field of biology. Edzac itself wasn't the fastest or the biggest or the best of its kind, but it was what most people refer to as the world's first true computer because it was more along the lines of the Turing test. Basically, was it Turing complete? Could this machine be used for anything as Turing would have stated? And a lot of the earlier machines, um, including EDVAC and ENIAC, were built for a specific purpose. Now, EDZAC was a multi-purpose machine that could be programmed, reprogrammed, reused, and it could be used for almost any purpose that a programmer wanted it to be useful. So in that way, it was actually regarded as the first true computer if you based it on Turing's laws. So Turing complete. Now the EDZAC would use something called mercury delay lines from memory. And um, it's something that really can't be replicated properly today because mercury, as we all know, is not a brilliant substance to use. And, um, you know, it just wouldn't be safe to do it. Now, they can be reproduced with coiled wire, but either way, mercury delay lines or electronic delay lines were basically the same principle. And it sounds probably more complicated than it really is. If you wanted to store memory or to store bits or data and you wanted to be able to use that in a basically situation or a program at a certain point, then you would need some way of delaying that signal getting from one point to another. Well, Mercury kind of was a, a glass tube, or in some cases aluminium tubes, which were filled with mercury, and the data would be converted to sound very similar to sonar. And that sound waves would propagate through the mercury, then they would hit an amplifier, and that would actually re-energize the sound waves, so it went back through the same route that it came before it was read on the other side. Now, that caused a delay and it was refreshable. It was the same way you get, you know, refreshable memory in the silicon world a little later down the line. And it was the same with the coiled wire system. They used a coiled wire delay system on later machines and that would be virtually the same. It would basically send the signal through a coil and that would slow down its path before it was read. And it was also refreshable. So in theory, you could keep the data going round and round in circles or backwards and forwards for technically as long as you really needed it. That's the kind of very simple explanation of the delay line is that there's a little bit more to it, but it's just to give you an idea of how in theory, it worked. Some of um, Morris Wilkes' accolades were a little bit later in his life. In 1967, he was awarded the Turing Award, which is quite apt, really, because Morris Wilkes didn't quite see eye to eye with Alan Turing. And here's a little extract from one of his speeches um, a little bit later in the 1980s. And you can see roughly what I mean by this and you know you get in you get a feeling that you know that the two really didn't get along too well other than in a cordial kind of professional relationship. Is that uh, in some quarters the impression has got around that Turing and I didn't get on together but that is quite untrue uh, we, we did have very different backgrounds he was rather reserved in manner, at least so I found him. 
but still there are occasional encounters where entirely cordial. At a, at a technical level, uh, of course, I did not go along with his ideas about computer architecture exactly, uh, and I thought that the programming system that he introduced at Manchester University was bizarre in the extreme. <laughs> <laughs> and I may indeed have expressed publicly my views rather strongly. And some admirers of Turing's, I think, um, thought that perhaps I did not show uh, sufficient proper reverence uh, for the uh, great man. But as you have heard, uh, well, why should I? Because we were exact contemporaries. Uh, we took the tripods in the same year. And as far as the fastness reveal, we achieved exactly the same result. A.J. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Good, who knew Turing very well eventually, uh, said in a recent essay uh, that uh, Turing was a deep thinker rather than a fast thinker. And he went on to make an interesting remark that his IQ was therefore not especially high. <laughs> now, I'm familiar with this distinction between uh, uh, deep and fast thinkers. To link it with IQ in that way was uh, uh, rather an insight to me. And, but that description does, I think, apply uh, very well uh, to uh, Turing. After the original Edzak machine, uh, he turned his attention to improving the concept and he brought out Edzak 2. And in this machine was the original development of a concept of microprogramming. And that's basically the realization of using a high speed ROM, read only memory, to control the CPU. And it greatly simplified CPU development and that led on to a much more powerful, much larger machine called the Titan. And that was a joint venture with Ferrante Limited and began in 1963. It eventually supported the UK's first time sharing system and provided wider access to the computing resources in the university, including time shared graphics or CAD system, computer aided design systems. A notable feature of the um, Titan's operating system was that it provided controlled access based on the identity of the program, as well as, or instead of, the identity of the user. And it was basically introducing password encryption into the system, which was later adopted by Unix. So Morris Wilkes had a lot of engineering prowess behind him. He also gained a lot of awards. And that's a long time after Alan Turing brought out his Turing Complete theory and his theory of AI. But in the time preceding that, Morris Wilkes received a number of distinctions. He was Knight Bachelor, Fellow of the British Computer Society, Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, Fellow of the Royal Society, Distinguished Fellow of the British Computer Society, Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, Elected Fellow of the Royal Society in 1956, Founder of the Member of the British Computer Society. He received a Turing Award in 67. He was given a citation for building the first computer with internally stored program, and that which was EDZAC, which was the one that used a mercury delay line memory. He was an author of Preparation of Programs for Digital Electronic Computers in 1951. And he received the Harry H. Good Memorial Award following the citation for his many original achievements in the computing Field. He was also, in 72, awarded the Honorary Doctor of Science Award by Newcastle University. In 1980, he retired from his post 
and joined the central engineering staff of Digital Equipment in Maynard, Massachusetts. He was then awarded the Faraday Medal by the Institution of Electrical Engineers and then he was became a member of the Olivetti's Research Strategy Board in 1987 and he was awarded an honorary degree, Doctor of Science, by the University of Bath. In 1997 he was presented with the Mountbatten Medal and in 2000 he was knighted in 2000 in the New Year's Honours List and in 2001 he was inducted as a Fellow of the Computer History Museum. One of Wilkes's famous quotes was, he came to the realisation that a good part for the remainder of his life he was going to be spending time finding errors in his own programs, which is how most programmers see things even today. So there we have Morris Wilkes, a extraordinary, extraordinary person who did more for the computer science community than most other people. And arguably he did more for the computer science community than Alan Turing because he actually got the machines to work and to run and you know, for most of it, it was more practical than theoretical and he did an awful lot over his lifetime to enable us to get to where we are with modern technology. Now Turing and his Turing complete theories and also his theories on AI massively pushed forward computer science but Morris Wilkes is kind of the unsung hero of the computer science world and he deserves a lot more credit than he's been actually given or a lot more air time than he's actually been given and um, I hope this video gives you a little bit more insight into the man and to the person who actually made the physical side of computing and the accessible side of computing better for most people going forward. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I uh, hope you subscribe because there's a lot more to come. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.